Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We all know that the air fuel mixture in SI engines is ignited by means of a spark plug. But have you ever thought of the ignition system behind the spark plug? Well, we'll discuss it today. The heat produced in the compression process will not be sufficient enough to ignite gasoline because of its high auto ignition temperature. Hence, an ignition system is necessary for initiating the combustion process. The ignition systems used in automobiles can be broadly classified into four types. They are battery coil ignition system, System, magneto ignition system, transistorized ignition system, and capacitive discharge ignition system. In this video, we are going to discuss battery coil ignition systems. Today, we'll be discussing the construction, working, advantages and disadvantages of the battery coil ignition system. A battery coil ignition system consists of a battery, an ignition switch, a ballast resistor, an ignition coil, a contact breaker, a capacitor, a distributor and spark plugs. Let us see these components one by one. A 6 to 12 volt battery acts as the energy source of the ignition system and it is charged by a dynamo driven by the engine. Lead acid batteries are used in light vehicles whereas alkaline batteries are used in heavy vehicles. Next, we have the ignition switch that acts as a key for switching the ignition system on or off. The third component is the ballast resistor. It is a type of resistor made of iron. When the temperature increases due to extended usage, the resistance of the resistor increases due to the property of iron and thus it prevents the coil from damage due to excessive heat. Then, there is an ignition coil that consists of primary and secondary windings wound over a soft iron core. The primary winding consists of about 200 turns and the secondary winding consists of about 20,000 turns. This complete setup is packed inside a metal container and it acts as a step-up transformer. Next, we have a contact breaker, a mechanical device which is used for establishing and breaking the contact in circuit. The contact breaker is operated using a cam. For four-stroke engines, the cam rotates at half the engine speed and it opens the circuit once for each cylinder during each complete engine cycle. Then we have a capacitor that is a charge storage device. The purpose of using a capacitor is to prevent the points of contact breaker from producing sparks. Then there is a distributor that has a rotor in the middle and metallic electrodes on its outer surface. At the end, we have spark plugs that are used to initiate sparks. It consists of a central electrode and a ground electrode. Now let's move on to see how these components are connected. The negative terminal of the battery is grounded and the positive terminal is connected to the primary winding. Ignition switch and the ballast resistor are connected in series between the battery and the primary coil. The other end of the primary coil is connected with the secondary coil and one end of the contact breaker. The contact breaker is grounded at the other end and the capacitor is connected in parallel with it. The battery, ignition switch, ballast resistor, primary coil, contact breaker and the capacitor make up the primary circuit. The other end of the secondary coil of the ignition coil is connected to a high tension wire which is capable of carrying current of high voltage. This in turn is connected to the rotor of the distributor. Then the metallic electrodes of the distributor are connected to the central electrode of the spark plugs. The secondary coil, distributor and the spark plugs make up the secondary circuit. Well that's it for the construction of the system. Now let's move on to how it works. When the ignition key is switched on and the contact breaker points are closed, a low voltage current flows in the primary circuit. The current flows from the battery through the switch, ballast resistor and the ignition coil to the contact breaker and the primary circuit gets completed at the ground. This current in the primary coil generates a magnetic field around it. But when the contact breaker opens due to the rotation of the cam, the primary circuit breaks. At this time, the current flows through the capacitor which prevents the points of contact breaker from producing sparks. As the primary circuit becomes open, the magnetic field around it changes suddenly. This rapid change in the magnetic field induces a very high voltage in the secondary coil due to the law of mutual induction. The high tension wire carries the current due to the high induced voltage from the secondary coil to the rotor of the distributor. From the rotor, the current passes through the metallic electrodes and it reaches the central electrode of the spark plugs. The potential difference created in between the electrodes of the spark plug ionizes the gap in between them. Thus, the gap starts conducting current which results in the formation of spark. As the rotor rotates, it comes in contact with the metal electrodes. Thus, spark is produced in the respective spark plugs accordingly. 
This is how the battery coil ignition system works. This system is of less cost and the intensity of the spark would be good even at low engine speeds. But it also has some disadvantages. Prolonged operations may result in the wear of the contact breaker. The contact breaker operated by the cam opens and closes quickly at high speeds, giving less time for the voltage to develop. Hence, there is a drop in spark voltage at high engine speeds. Well, that's it about battery coil ignition system, guys. We'll discuss the other types in the upcoming videos. Until then, bye.